today at 15:45 hours india conducted three underground nuclear tests in the pokhran range no one can forget the contributions of the father of india's atomic program to nuclear research in india we are talking about none other than dr homi bhaba a great 20th century indian physicist in his honor after his death the atomic energy establishment at mumbai was renamed bhaba atomic research center welcome to science saturdays a podcast series that takes a journey to the past shedding light on the achievements of scientists who rejuvenated science and inculcated a sense of wonder and curiosity among the common populace my name is rashmi and in this episode you will hear the story of dr homi bhaba Bhaba was born in an educated and prosperous household in Bombay in 1909. His father, Jahangir Bhaba, was an Oxford graduate and the legal adviser to the Tata Group. In the rich and educated households of the time, following the English lifestyle and mannerisms was the norm, and Bhaba's family was no exception. He was admitted to the Cathedral and John Cannon High in Bombay which resembled a miniature version of England. The teachers and almost all the students belonged to English families. It was here that Bhaba developed interests in not just science and mathematics but poetry, music and painting as well. He often participated in self-traded painting exhibitions and even won a prize once. You may be interested to know that several of his paintings are still displayed at London's Art Gallery for us to see. Although Bhaba excelled in his studies, he rarely slept as a child. This became a huge cause of concern for his parents, who then decided to get him checked by specialist doctors in London. It came as a relief to them when doctors exclaimed that the cause of Bhaba's lack of sleep was his hyperactive mind and predicted that he would grow up to become an intelligent man. We sincerely hope that the doctors lived to see their predictions come true. In the next section, you will hear some stories about Bhaba's education and research career. Bhaba had a deep-seated interest in physics. However, his family wished him to earn a mechanical engineering degree and later join the Tata Steel Company in Jamshedpur as a metallurgist. Bhaba, being an obedient son, left for Cambridge at the age of 18 to pursue the same. As an undergraduate in the engineering degree program, Bhaba wrote a letter to his parents seeking permission to pursue some mathematics courses. His parents agreed to fund his stay in England for two more years to pursue his desired courses, only if he cleared the final examinations of his engineering degree. As was expected from the brilliant student, Bhaba proceeded to pass these exams with distinction. Following this, he set forth to pursue his second degree in mathematics. and later a doctorate in theoretical physics while working at the Cavendish laboratory which was a prime center for breakthrough scientific research at the time in the early 1900s nuclear physics was an emerging field that attracted some of the greatest minds bhaba too became attracted to the field and soon performing experiments with radiation emitting particles became his passion in january 1933 He earned his doctorate in nuclear physics after publishing his first scientific paper titled The Absorption of Cosmic Radiation. In 1934, he was awarded the Isaac Newton studentship which enabled him to complete his PhD in theoretical physics under R. H. Fowler. The research he did while at Cambridge had a direct bearing on the resolution of several important issues of cosmic ray phenomena and the interactions of particles. 
he was involved in the development of the cascade theory and was the first person to perform the calculations that determined the electron positron scattering separation a scattering process that was later named bhaba scattering bhaba's leading edge research and experiments in nuclear physics brought great laurels to many indian physicists at the time who switched their fields to nuclear physics however one must also never forget that his contributions to the field of theoretical physics played a major role in initiating and fostering cosmic ray research in india in the next section we will look at bhaba's return to india You would be thrilled to know that just a few years before Bhaba joined the Cavendish laboratory, Robert Oppenheimer was also a researcher at the same place. To know more about him, watch the first season of Science Saturdays. Bhaba came on a brief holiday to India in 1939. However, he could not go back to England as planned since the Second World War broke out in September 1939 and there was a prospect of heavy bombing over England by the Germans. His decision to stay in India turned out to be a turning point not only in his academic career but also for the advancement of Indian science and technology in the post independence era bhaba joined the physics department of the indian institute of science that was headed by c v raman he gathered some students to work with him in theoretical particle physics and one of them was harish chandra who later held a professional chair in mathematics at the princeton institute of advanced studies in parallel homi bhaba also started experimental work in cosmic rays by establishing the cosmic ray research institute thanks to the unique start given by him in the 40s cosmic ray research in india grew into one of the largest activities in the world covering all aspects of radiation in the 50s and 60s while at the indian institute of science bhaba recognized the need for setting up an institute solely devoted to the pursuit of fundamental research in the country the developments in the field of cosmic ray studies and the area of nuclear physics with accelerators had convinced bhaba that the future lay in these areas with financial support from sir dorab tata trust and government of maharashtra homi bhaba established the tata institute of fundamental research or tifr in bombay in june 1945 when bhaba realized that the technological advancement of the atomic system could no longer take place within the tifr it was bhaba who proposed to the government to build a new laboratory fully dedicated to this purpose he further formulated a strategy of extracting power from india's vast thorium reserves rather than from its meager uranium reserves at that time the thorium focused strategy was in contrast to all other countries in the world and it paved the way to india's three stage nuclear power program homi bhaba was awarded the padma bhushan by the government of india in 1954 After Bhaba died in a plane crash on 24 January 1966 the atomic energy establishment in Mumbai was given a new name the Bhaba Atomic Research Center in his honor Many possible theories have been advanced for this air crash including one that said that the CIA Central Intelligence Agency was involved to paralyze India's nuclear program Gregory Douglas 
a journalist who conducted telephone conversations with the former CIA operative Robert Crowley for four years, published a book called Conversations with the Crow, in which he claims that Crowley implied that the CIA was responsible for assassinating Homi Bhabha. Crowley reportedly said that a bomb in the cargo section of the plane exploded mid-air, bringing down the commercial Boeing 707 airliner in the Alps with few traces, describing it as an unfortunate accident. Conclusion Do you think that his death was an accident? Or do you think it was a conspiracy? Tell us in the comment section below. Thank you for joining us in this blast to the past. To watch the rest of the episodes of Science Saturdays, do not forget to browse the official YouTube channel of Utkalp Digital Classes. If you like the season of Science Saturdays, please do like the videos and subscribe to our channel for more such infotainment. Also, do not forget to share this and the rest of the podcasts of Science Saturdays with your friends and family.